Hello grade 10 learners! Welcome to our science class. It's nice to see you again. Come and join me as we explore and discuss our lesson for quarter 3, week 2. But before that, do not forget to like, share, and click the notification bell for more updated video lessons. Sit back and enjoy learning. Our lesson for today talks about the living things and the environment, focusing the heredity, inheritance, and variations. The content standard is the learners demonstrate an understanding of the information stored in the DNA is being used to make proteins. Our learning competencies are explain how protein is made using information from the DNA. Letter A, identify the role of DNA and RNA in protein synthesis. Letter B, describe the DNA replication. Letter C, relate the DNA replication to its complementary structure. And letter D, describe transcription and translation process. DNA replication and the processes involved in protein synthesis. Here is an illustration of a typical cell. A typical cell showing its importance, parts, and its structure. One of the important parts of the cell is the nucleus. The nucleus contains the hereditary characteristics that can be passed from parents to offspring. It contains numbers of chromosomes, and the chromosomes has a very, very long strands of DNA. Remember, the DNA is the blueprint of every organism, and it is considered as unique. In this lesson, you will understand the structure of DNA and RNA, and explain how role of each nucleic acid in protein synthesis after going through the lesson, you are expected to identify the similarities and differences of DNA and RNA and how RNA is used DNA information to produce proteins. Now, you will work on activities to assess your understanding on the structure of the DNA. Explain how DNA replication takes place and how RNA is made using the information from the DNA and information in some genes is translated into proteins. The diagram shows a segment of a DNA. A segment of a DNA comprises a series of nucleotides. Series of nucleotides can actually form a long strand of a nucleic acid. But a nucleotide comprises three important components. The phosphate group the sugar component, and the, co the nitrogenous bases. They are arranged in a double helix structure, like what you've seen. The diagram shows the comparison between the DNA and the RNA. It shows the molecular structure of the DNA and the RNA. Even the molecular structure of the four nitrogenous bases for each nucleic acids, as well as the sugar component and its structure. The table shows the basis comparison between the DNA and the RNA. In terms of number of strands, location in the cell, type of sugar, and the nitrogenous base pair. DNA and RNA structure. Deoxyribonucleic acids or DNA 
is a nucleic acid that stores and transmits the genetic information from one generation of an organism to the next. The building block of DNA is called nucleotides. And each nucleotide is composed of one phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and one of the four bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. In a rule, it is always says that adenine pairs with thymine and guanine always pair with cytosine. Ribonucleic acid or RNA like DNA is a nucleic acid. However, RNA is a single-stranded molecule, whereas DNA is a double-stranded molecule. Secondly, the sugar of DNA is deoxyribose, while the RNA has a ribose sugar component. The DNA is found basically inside the nucleus of a cell, while the RNA is found at the cytoplasm of the cell. DNA and RNA has four nitrogenous bases, but instead of thymine or RNA, it contains a similar base called uracil. The uracil pairs with adenine and cytosine pairs with guanine. The major types of RNA includes the messenger RNA or the mRNA, the ribosomal RNA or R. RNA and the transfer RNA or the pRNA. Here is the illustration of the summary of the central dogma of molecular biology. It shows here that the DNA needs to undergo the process of replication. And from that, the DNA needs to produce a message will be turned on to become a messenger RNA in the process of transcription and the mRNA needs to undergo the process of translation to produce proteins. For DNA replication, deoxyribonucleic acids or DNA is copied during the interface prior to mitosis and meiosis. It is very important that the new copies are exactly like the original molecule. The structure of the DNA provides a mechanism for making accurate copies of molecule. The process of making copies of DNA is called replication. The DNA replicates two identical copies of DNA molecules that are being produced, which is exactly the same as the original. Here's the illustration of the cell cycle showing an emphasis of DNA replication on its cycle. In the process of replication, the following are the events while DNA copies itself. First, the, the enzyme called helicase breaks the hydrogen bond that link between the nitrogen space of the DNA. Two strands of DNA splits, like what you've seen on the diagram. The bases attached to each strand then pair up with free DNA nucleotides surrounding the nucleus. The complementary nucleotides are added to each strand by the DNA polymerase to form new strands. As a result, you actually produce a semi-conservative replicated DNA. For example, let's have this base pair. Let's have one strand of DNA coded as C, A, C, G, A, C, T, and T. So if you will be asked what would be its base pairing, this would be the result. G T, G, C, T, G, A, and A. 
So you see that the complementary base pair is followed in the DNA. That A always pair with P and G always pair with C. Now, during the process of replication, this segment of DNA will then separate due to the action of the helicase. As it separated, there are already free DNA nucleotides that ready to pair up with open strands of DNA. And this would be the result. There are production of old strands of the DNA. As you have seen, there are two DNA produced, causing to give two old strands and two new strands. Thus, we can say that this type of replication is a semi-conservative replication. Now, let's move on to gene expression. Gene expression is also known as protein synthesis that involves two important processes, the transcription and translation. Let's start it off with transcription. Transcription is the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA that directs the order of nucleotides in messenger RNA or mRNA. The messenger RNA brings information from the DNA in the nucleus to the protein manufacturing area the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, the mRNA becomes the template of information to make proteins. The transcription process can be divided into three steps. First, the initiation. The ribonucleic acid polymerase or RNA polymerase binds and opens the DNA molecule that will be transcribed. Stage 2, elongation. As the DNA molecules open, the RNA polymerase slides along the DNA strand and links the free RNA nucleotides that pair up with nitrogen space of the complementary strand of the DNA. Stage 3 is termination. When the process of base pairing is complete, the RNA molecule breaks away as the DNA strand rejoins. The RNA leaves the nucleus and goes to the site of Lhasa. Here is the illustration of the whole process of transcription. Starting off with initiation, followed by the elongation and termination. Another illustration talks about transcription, whereby it shows an elongated mRNA that codes for a certain message coming from strands of DNA. Here, you will see that pairing of adenine into uracil and cytosine to guanine. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose an RNA polymerase open a segment of a DNA. It will cause to separate the DNA and split it and widen it. Thus, you produce a coding strand and a non-coding strand. So, an elongated mRNA strand will likely produce G, U, G, C, U, G, A, A. The message is now ready, coming from the DNA, and it, it likely produces an mRNA sequence of GUG, CUG, AA. And that is our transcribed mRNA sequence.
In the diagram, it shows that the messenger RNA is now ready to go out from the nucleus and be ready for translation process. It will look for the ribosome to start the process of translation. Translation is the process of converting the information in the mRNA into a sequence of amino acids that make a protein. 2-RNA plays an important role in the process. These are the ribosomal RNA or rRNA that holds tightly into the mRNA using its information to assemble the amino acids in correct order. And the transfer RNA or the tRNA that supplies the amino acid to the ribosome to be assembled as a protein. As the messenger RNA leaves the nucleus of the cell and proceeds to the cytoplasm, the ribosome, which is the site for protein synthesis, awaits for the start of the translation process. Translation process can also be divided into three stages. Stage 1 is the initiation. The mRNA binds to the ribosome and it usually looks for a start codon. A codon is a triplet base that code for a certain amino acid. The start codon on mRNA is AUG. The tRNA that carries an anticodon complements the codon, approaches towards the ribosome. The second stage is elongation. The ribosome slides along the mRNA a new tRNA molecule carrying amino acids are in place. An enzyme joins them by forming a peptide bond between them. Thus, a polypeptide chain is produced as the process continues. The third stage is the termination. When the ribosome reaches the stop codon like UAG, UAA, and UGA, in the mRNA sequence, a release factor will bind, allowing the ribosome to dissociate with mRNA and the release of polypeptide chain. Protein synthesis is now complete. The diagram shows the, the complete process of translation, whereby an action of ribosomes and the transfer RNA to develop and produce growing amino acids to form proteins. Let's say there's an example of a messenger RNA. AUG, CUG, AAC. And that is our mRNA sequence that can be divided into a codon. The corresponding anticodon sequence in tRNA and the corresponding amino acids attached to the transfer RNA are as follows. CAU is meant for AUG and AUG has an amino acid coded for methionine. GAU is meant or complement to GCU. CUG is an amino acid, has an amino acid for leucine. UUG is meant for AAC. And AAC has an amino acid for asparagine. Thus, it produces a sequence of methionine, leucine, asparagine. The bond that connects two succeeding amino acids is what we call the peptide bond. And a chain of peptide bond with amino acid is called a polypeptide chain. A polypeptide chain is actually produced a protein. 
The genetic code table is the table that shows the distribution of amino acids coded for certain mRNA codons. There are 20 different amino acids. Some different codons are coded for same amino acids. For example, if the mRNA code is AUG, AAA, CAC, CUG, UCA, GGG, UGA, the sequence of amino acid are AUG is for methionine, AAA is for lysine, CAC is for histidine, CUG is for leucine, UCA is for serine, GGG is for glycine, and of course, the UGA is for the stop. On your learning task, you will going to trace the code. Procedure, copy and fill in the table. Refer to the genetic code table to identify the amino acids. To determine the order of base in the first column, second column, and the third column, consider the complementary base pairing. To identify the amino acid, look for the base in the mRNA codon. And for our assessment, write the following whether it is true or false. Number one, RNA polymerase initiates the process of translation. Number two, in a semi-conservative replication, two identical DNA has st old strands and new strands. Number three, the transfer RNA carries the anticodon that supplement the codon in the messenger RNA strand. Number four, the ribosomes binds with mature mRNA and begins the process of translation. Number five, cytosine pairs with uracil in RNA strand. Number six, the stop codon includes UAG, GUA, UAA. Number seven, the DNA directs the order of nucleotides to be used as template for protein synthesis. Number eight, a single nucleotide comprises a phosphate group, a sugar component, and a nucleic acid. Number nine, in DNA molecule, a base pair would be composed of adenine and guanine. And number 10, the helicase breaks the bond between the nitrogenous pair of the DNA. This has been your teacher, Mr. Ruel V. Ingreso, saying bye, have a nice day, and see you again on our next video lesson. Take care and enjoy learning.